Ready? Are we on? Okay. Hey, MK. Where is she going? UMBC? UMBC. Okay. All right. I hope you find what you're looking for there have, and uh, have a good day. We are back in mean land. We went up to the board and wrote all the stuff about proportions, just like you did with us yesterday. And now we're learning all of that stuff for means. So yesterday we had started and got about this far. Notice all the requirements for being normal. There's different for over 30, between 15 and 30, and less than 15. And also, if both populations are normal, that's another way that we can state that our sample difference is normal. The mean of the difference of two samples is the mean of the first population minus the mean of the second population. So we're looking, the only thing left, this was shape, center, and spread. I've asked everyone to turn to page 377. And observe, if you would, maybe you recall. So this is an aside. So I'll make a little box over here. Oh, no. So in the past, on page 377, we saw, we were studying random variables. And at that point, we were subtracting and adding them. So do you recall what the mean of two random variables were when you added the two together? What's the mean of the sum distribution of x and y? Do you see that anywhere on that page, MD? <coughs> it just says um, mx plus my. Right, the mean of the x variable x plus the mean of the y. So then it'd be super sweet. And then we talked about a thing called um, standard deviation. <laughs> and we looked at, oh, before we did that, what about the mean of x minus y? Hmm. What was that? Mean of x minus okay. mean of y. And so we were coming well. along. You see that's parallel to what we're doing here. But what we're doing for standard deviation will also be parallel. And that was trickier. So it'd be really nice if the standard deviation of x plus y, and when they were random variables, was the standard deviation of x plus the standard deviation of y. But that's not true. Do you recall what hoop we had to jump through back then? Do you recall? Or can you tell from looking? You had to square it. Right. So you variances you could add. Remember the standard deviation squared is called the variance. So you could add those. So I can go back here and call this squared and this squared and this squared. And then I could get the uh, standard deviation of x plus y by taking the square root of that. So remember that extra step we had to do back then? Yeah. That's going to come out and haunt us today. So, all right, and before I leave that, what about, this is another shocker from the past. So, glad you're all sitting down. How do we get x, the standard deviation of x minus y? Do you recall that? Does it tell us on that page? It's still plus. Right, very good. I saw it, I just read it. That was a blast from the past as well. All right, this is going to come in, all of this is going to come in right now and haunt us. So let's let it do its work. So I am teaching you now from today's work, we're looking at the spread of x bar minus x1 bar minus x2 bar. And it turns out to be a big square root, just like we had to do in the past with random variables, big square root. And we have to take the variance, which is the standard deviation squared from the first population over n1 plus the standard deviation of the second population squared over n2. So that's not so shocking once you remember this from the past. But if I just went right here and did this, you might not have had any idea why. All right. And we can only do this if n 10n is less than big n. So that's if. All right. 
But we uh, should have already fun. checked that back here during our RIN step. All right. So won't that be fun to memorize? Super do do. We kind of did it something like it in the past, so maybe it won't be such a challenge. All right, so we have shape, center, and spread for the difference of two means. Now we're going to do a two sample. T, remember uh -huh. how we switched to T? Two sample, T interval. Is this still theory? Yep. How much more we got to write? <laughs> One more. We have to do the test statistic. Okay, I'm trying to like manage Smush my it on. Space I didn't here. give you enough room. Two sample T interval for the difference of two. I'll just say for a new one minus V2. Difference of two means. Alright, so this, this will surprise you now that you've seen everything else. Remember when we start, when we're establishing an interval, we start with our best guess. So what do you think, MD, the best guess might be? Mm. Negative three to three. <laughs> what? We're looking for our best guess, because then we do our best guess, our point estimator, oh, plus oh. or minus. Best guess is probably the mean. You would, I choose you. Or what? What do you think it would be? Yeah, it'd be mu one minus mu two. X bar, because we we don't know the mean. That's what we're establishing an interval for. Right. So with a certain degree of confidence, we're looking for an interval that contains the difference of the two means. But we're going to have to deal with samples. So that's our best guess from our sample. X bar one minus X bar two, that's followed right. by the T, T star. star. And then this new friend of ours, the standard deviation. All right. Actually, this this isn't the symbol. I'm sorry. This isn't it's the symbol SF. for the sample. It's the sample. Right. Right. So what are we going to put there? S X. Yeah. Except for this one, since there's a one and a two, we're just going to call it X. I mean S. You can put a little X in that you want, but it'd be S sub X sub one, and S sub X sub two. So we're just going to call it S. So that just tells you it's the standard deviation from the sample. Ms. Powell? Yeah. So on page 377, uh -huh. was like proving the standard deviation theorem, right? We were looking at the standard deviation for random variables that were added and subtracted. Okay. And we actually ended up using the pattern from those right here. So because remember back when we did random variables, we were yeah. we could add the means, but we were not allowed to add standard deviations. We can only add variances, which is standard deviation squared. So to get back to the standard deviation, we had to do the variances, add them, and square root it. Mm -hmm. And it turned out surprisingly when we did a difference of two random variables, this was still positive. I remember that. Yeah. I don't know why, but and I that's it. why it's showing up just like that. Yeah. All right, so that's good. And now one more thing, and our theory is over. Can you fit on one more thing? Yeah, I have the last space. sample standard deviations, don't you? Do you usually, do you usually not have the actual standard deviations right. for? Right. This is when. I don't remember quite why. But. When standard deviation one and standard deviation two are unknown. And since we don't know the mean, how are we going to know the standard deviation? So what do you think, how would this change, Brian, do you think, if we did know for some way, for some unusual case, which is very rare, we're looking for the, a, a confidence interval for the difference of the two means. So we don't know that, but we do know the standard deviation. How can you know that? Well, you, a standard deviation is a difference from a mean. So... Rare is very rare. Yeah. Do you know how this would change, Brian? This Wait. step would change That's if we did up. know? That's what I was going to ask, actually. Um, first of all, you, you wouldn't have the sample. Yeah. You'd have the real one. It would be a Z-star 
Z. Right. Is that the only difference? Yeah. This and these two. Yeah, yep. so you didn't, when, you happen to know, difference. when you happen to know the actual standard deviations, to do it that. only just takes Z I didn't star even times write it down this time. It just takes Z star times the standard deviation x bar 1 minus x bar 2, which we proved up there. Right. You just put that in. Whereas for the popular for the proportions, you couldn't quite do that. Right. Or, right. Well, because the only difference was that a regular standard deviation for two population differences right. was use the actual uh, was using the actual statistic proportion. proportion. Whereas yeah, here it's an added. You, it was added. Yeah. So why why is that? Did you not usually? Well, this stands for the standard deviation from the sample. That's how we write it. So that is like it has a hat. Oh, I get it. Because when you're using a constant interval for proportions. You are obviously going to know. Um, you're obviously going to know p hat. You may not know p, right. the actual p. Right. Whereas for means, you, in order to use a That's standard, de in order to get a standard deviation, you have to know the actual population standard. No, well, I, this one stands for s is not. This, you, you know the difference between S and this. Yeah. So right. you need this to is from the sample. This is mm -hmm. from the population. Right. So I didn't even write down the rare case. If you want to write down the rare case, you can. So the rare case is when the, this is unknown, but this is known. This will change to a Z, and this will change to these. Mm, that's not what that happened. It is so rare. And I didn't see it pop up on the test, but... Should I stop us and restart? Yeah, we can start again. All right, bye.